Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. It is Tuesday, happy Tuesday morning to you. I hope that your morning is going well. My morning is going great. I'm outside in a sweater. What happened to the weather? I don't even know. <laughs> It changed just like it does everywhere. So I know yesterday was like one of those super hot muggy days. It was supposed to be a little bit cooler and that ended up being like no rain for a long time. So it was just muggy. You could just feel that the moisture building and building and then it finally dropped last night. It was poured rain and then um, this morning the temperature dropped. It's freezing once again. So I'm like, it's back to 65 but sunny. So I know that it's gonna be sunshine. It's gonna feel good, but I got to open my windows. Like I woke right up and I opened all the windows in the house. The, everybody came out, they're like, it's freezing out here. I'm like, I know, it feels so nice. I like to be able to have my windows open and you know, I can be able to do that very often here in Florida. <laughs> So, you know, I was talking to my dad too on the phone yesterday and he was saying, he goes, he goes, last week we had snow and or last week we had 70. He goes, it was nice and sunny and then today it's back to snow. And so I'm like, I know everywhere, everywhere, everybody's got different. The weather goes up and it doesn't matter where you live. It goes up and down, even in Florida, it goes up and down as well. So, so we'll take it and it'll be good sweater, wet sweater weather and we'll be able to go for a bike ride and walk tonight and that'll feel really nice as well. So I thought I would do a video. A few weeks ago I did a video and it was like back to the basics and it was all about um, setting up a cleaning systemization for your home. And I got a a lot of good feedback from that. And I thought, you know what, why don't I do a couple more videos occasionally about those, just like getting to the ba basics of like planning out your days or how to organize your time. Do you have to do this? Absolutely not. Will it work for you? I don't know. It may, it may not. I'm just, it's just like parenting and all the other advice that people give and books. There's, that's why there's thousands of books on how to raise your kids. There's thousands of books on how to clean your home. There's thousands of books on this is the best schedule. I mean, it, it works, it may work for some, it might not work for others. And I have found that to be true. I found that by just by having 10 kids, I can realize nobody's plan is perfect. You've got to do what works for you. <laughs> I love that. I love the parenting books. They, you know, they're written, maybe not, not even written sometimes by parents that have any kids, but if they are, they're sometimes written by ones that just have one or two kids, which sometimes their kids might fit into that mold. But I, I have found that with larger families, you raise your kids all the same. They're all different because every personality is different. I've seen that in my friends' families and everybody's different. So the same thing with planning and scheduling and homemaking and, you know, grocery list and schedules for your day. Not everybody's plan and way is going to work for you. It's just whatever works that's that you got to find it. That's why there's such a vast plethora of information here on the internet and you can you know pick and choose and see what works for you. So I got a lot of a couple good emails. They were from a lot of younger moms that said you know thank you. I'm in the midst of when I've got a lot of little ones at home and it just seems overwhelming. So thank you for getting to the basics of this. And I thought that's you know I forget about that when I started vlogging. My kids were a little bit older, not, they were still young, but not where like I implemented a lot of the stuff. I still do a lot of the stuff, like cleaning schedules still have it, but I didn't have to get as specific when I was vlogging because we had already passed that phase because they're getting older. And so that's why I wanted to revisit it and revisit it and go through it and go, okay, back to how we used to do it when there was a lot of little ones. And it also helps when you're older with older, and maybe when nobody's in the house, which is a beautiful thing. You can use your cleaning systemization anytime when you have it's just you taking care of it and there's nobody at home or when you have 10 15 kids at home it works the same way for any kind of thing you just got to set up what works for you so something else we did was managing your days in your home and so this all this information I put together in a book this I wrote this book a long time ago and it was large family mother and it was just all about building blocks in your home and taking different areas and setting up different things finding which areas were frustrating for you in your home and then trying to figure out a way to make it all work for you in your home and so i've written i wrote a long time ago it was more when my kids were younger but we still use a lot of the things now but the beautiful thing is like you can do it or like just take ideas from it and say okay this works for me this doesn't and that's a great thing that's the beautiful thing and part of it so today is going to be in managing your week so if you ever started your week i do this all the time and you you like have good intentions maybe you have a big giant list of things to accomplish and maybe the list work great for you and you're able to mark them all off and get them done that's awesome i know for myself i'm a list person i don't use i don't follow this exactly because my days are so changed and so varied right now in my life. So I'm sharing with you what worked for me before when my schedule was very much set. When I knew what we were doing, the days were the same, it worked. I tried doing it for a little bit and was not doing it here because my schedule is so much different now. And that's okay. We just are a different season in our life, but um, you just gotta do what you can do. So I know I'll get up and have a huge list of things that I wanna, or think in my head wanna accomplish for the week. And sometimes I get them all done and sometimes I don't. And sometimes that can be frustrating. And so especially, when you've got a whole bunch of things to do in a house and you're running a home or you know whatever's going on you've got a job and you still want to get home and do these things and so it can be so frustrating so having a plan for your week and having specific days to do things 
is a good thing. Like we got this from Little House on the Prairie books. Remember Little House on the Prairie books? If you read the books back in the day, in the books it would say Ma would wash on Monday. She would iron on Tuesday. She would bake and make butter on Wednesday. Now obviously it, laundry does not take all day. Unless you have a ton of kids and it does. We did back in the day. <laughs> so sometimes doing all your laundry one day is a good thing. We did. And then like the next day they would iron everything. It would take all day to iron. Or then the next day they would do butter and that would take all day to do butter. So we can't, we don't necessarily have to do that as much now. But if you think of how those women, I, I even think of like the whole craze of like shelf cooking and pantry and freezer cooking. And it's like women have been doing this for hundreds of years. I'm gonna say thousands, but I don't know how far back. Hundreds of years, pantry cooking. They've been doing pantry shelf cooking for years because they had to cook with what they had. They didn't get to run to the grocery store. So the whole phenomenon of doing these things, freezer meals are newer because there wasn't always freezers, but pantry, you know, shelf challenges, all these things, these have been going on forever because women just couldn't run to the store to get what they needed. Nowadays, it's so much more convenient to do those things, but that's why you get back to those basics. So the same thing with managing your week, women have been doing set days for things forever, forever. And if you go to like, um, like Amish homes and Mennonite homes that lived more like the old school, old school, old world, what do they call it? old world? I think it's old world. If you kind of look at their life, they will probably stick to a lot of these ways because it just works for their families. So I had to think, how can I incorporate this into my day and my current life and do those things? So I had to sit down and I had to think of like the top areas in my life that I have to manage and take care of. So I knew for myself, like we couldn't do laundry all in one day because we had a septic. And so I, I always wanted to try doing all my laundry one day, but we always lived in the country. If you did all of your laundry in one day, before we had the energy efficient washers, mind you, we had the old drum ones at one time, you would overflow your septic. So I would try to do that. And then, you know, the septic would be overflowing with water. So that was never a good thing to do. <laughs> But now we have in the city, it's different. We can do those things. So I had to think of the different areas that I needed. Like I never ironed, I didn't mend, so I didn't have to worry about the things. But for me and for our family, the things that we did was laundry was huge. Cleaning the house is obviously a big one. Baking, because we would do a lot of bread and treats, that kind of thing was huge for us. We would always have to do some errands because you always have to run errands in the household. And then I would also take care of office slash paperwork in my days. So those were all the areas that were huge for us in our household. So I would take Monday as more of our bulk laundry day and I didn't do everything on Monday because mind you it would overflow our septic so for us those this is how I would break mine up you're gonna your life is gonna be different maybe you don't have to do laundry I don't know it depends on what I think you have to but maybe you don't I don't know <laughs> maybe someone else doesn't you don't have to worry about that in your life so Monday was our laundry day because it was after a, a long weekend we didn't do anything the weekend so Monday would come and it'd be like I would get up early and I would start my laundry right away we would have laundry hampers in our home and so we I always had the kids throw their this is when they're little mind you now my kids do their own laundry so so this is this doesn't pertain to me now I'm sharing with you wisdom that helped me back in the day so I would have we had a couple different hampers and so we actually just had one in our house we had one in the by the bedrooms and we had one by the washing machine for like kitchen towels and things like that and so what we do is I told the kids as soon as you take off your clothes you put it into the hamper that's where it went because I only did laundry at the beginning of the week I ended up doing it at the end of the week because I had to so like if you didn't put your clothes in there guess what you ran out of clothes I didn't do laundry <laughs> You didn't have anything to wear. You had to wear older clothes. So I took a couple times to remind a few of them, especially the teenagers, things like that. Like, hey, if you don't do the laundry, you're not gonna have anything to wear. So throw your clothes immediately in there. And sometimes that takes time. When you have a lot of little kids, I know, it takes time but if you go up there and say hey you forgot your laundry don't pick it up for them hey you forgot to put that in the hamper that's where it goes like it's like training to immediately put your laundry in the laundry basket like i know i i i always throw mine in my basket if i don't i throw it on the ground i'm like that seems so weird to do that and i have i have done that where i've just thrown it on my ground i'm like wow that just seems like a weird phenomenon not to throw your laundry in a dirty basket you know just to stick on the floor so i always try to say hey throw your thing right away in there hang up your towel that's how we did it and then i would always separate all of our laundry we had a big pile of towels we had a pile of darks we had a pile of whites now this is different now mind you so i'm just showing you how it worked back in the day we would do i'd have towels i'd have darks i had lights and then I had work clothes because my husband was working a job where it was always like, you know, dirty work clothes that you had to use. And then I would consult my cleaning schedule and find out whose bedding was to be washed and we would make sure we grabbed that right away or after they woke up and get that to be washed as well. And now I used to hang up all of our laundry. All of our laundry, yes. You, a lot of people say, why don't you have a clothesline? Because I hung up all of our laundry for years, years, everything. 
didn't even have a dryer by choice mind you by choice it broke and then by choice chose to not get one so we would hang everything out and it was great so i would always get my laundry rolling right away and i'd get my towels done because we hung our towels outside i always get towels done and then i would do like the um like the work clothes like jeans and that because i could hang those outside as well yes we had stiff clothes yes we had stiff towels my older kids are probably traumatized by stiff towels because we hung everything outside <laughs> sorry kids it was life i remember i remember going to my grandparents my grandma's and she would hang them up she'd hang jeans up and it'd be it'd be like under her porch and it'd be freezing cold and those jeans would be so stiff you could barely move them <laughs> but she didn't have an electric bill from her dryer so it worked now it's not it wasn't always a nice day but if it was a nice day i would start really early when it was dark out and i'd get everything going so i could have it in a basket ready to hang outside i would even hang like this said the work pants jeans you can hang up yet there's a certain way to hang clothes as well so they dry more efficiently remember that towels you know you can clip them together and hook them i don't can't even show you because i don't even have a clothesline <laughs> But you can like save on the space by doing that. And jeans, same way, hang them upside down. By the ankles, they do better. And then I would even hang the work shirts. I would put them on hangers and hang them outside so they had fresh air to blow through them to make them nice and fresh and clean. Nothing like that, but we don't do that anymore. But if you have an option, that's a great thing to do. It's funny how you do laundry different. So back then I would just start, then I wash all the whites. And then when it came out of the dryer, immediately I'd separate it into baskets. We had dad and moms, we had the girls, and we had the boys. Because girls had a room and the boys had a room. And then that's how we did it. But everybody, I'm like, wow, that was a lot of sorting back then. You just gotta do things how it works for your family. I think of it now and then when we also had it, we had a long, I had my husband, we had a long hallway to the laundry room and we had a long shelf. And so you can go back to my blog and see this. And I had baskets, I labeled it with sticky letters like dad, mom, whoever's it was in the basket. And so what I would do is, because sometimes I would do laundry, I'd do it on Monday, and then I also would do it again at the end of the week. Well, sometimes I was able to throw a load, and I did, and so then I would take it out, I would just put it in that person's basket, and then eventually they put their baskets away. I didn't fold it, I didn't do any of that. They did that if they wanted to. If there were nice things, I hung up the dresses and that, but most everything just went into the basket. So a change, life is different. Now everybody does their own laundry, so now my kids are all self-sufficient. I've had friends that had their younger kids do their own laundry, and for me, the reason why I didn't, and it wasn't because I didn't want to be self-sufficient. No, my kids are very self-sufficient. They have all grown up into adults that can be very independent and know how to function in life. So trust me, if you never let them do laundry for a little bit, they'll still function. They'll still figure it out. But the reason why is because it costs more. If I had, um, when you're trying to cut corners, when you're trying to save money, you don't want everybody doing a load of laundry, especially if you didn't have a high efficiency washer. We had the big drop, some of water to be used and gone out. So it was a lot of water and a lot of soap and all those things. So for me to have everybody do it separately was not efficient. I don't even, do they even have drum washers anymore? I think everything's high efficiency, but maybe not. Nowadays, it's so much more efficient. So I don't even think that's a concern anymore because you can do smaller loads. I know my kids do their own laundry, but back in the day, everyone would always question, why aren't your kids doing their own laundry? Because it cost me money. <laughs> That's why it was easier to, to put them together and do a larger load than a bunch of smaller loads. So even for sanity wise, it was just, I knew that that saved that way. But now everybody does their own. They're, everybody has their own laundry. Um, the boys put theirs together. That's the only two that have theirs together because they're boys, they don't care. Every girl has theirs all separately and they all come and do their own laundry. And then we have a basket for the girls' towels, a basket, and that's it. So the girls do the towels once a week and then they all do their separate laundry. The boys just throw all theirs into one bin and they don't care. <laughs> and then Greg and I have ours as well. We have two separate hampers and we do our laundry usually once a week. Usually at the end of the week I do ours or on the weekend. But that was why we did it and I didn't train them when they were little to do their own because it cost. That was why. So, and then I also recommend everything in cold water. I know you do things in warm water. I know that, but it's like we have been doing laundry in cold water forever, forever. And guess what? It gets clean. And now, now, like I was looking at my thing reading it, I'm like, it's so funny because back in the day they didn't have like cold laundry detergent for cold water now they do and everything pretty much is cold water so it's cheaper the only thing we did in hot was the diapers because we had cloth diapers and they were amazing but the only thing i did do is hot water because of you know you want to make sure it sanitizes and i was also looking we used to make our own laundry detergent as well i have since stopped making my own laundry detergent because of the new washer and dryers it tends to build up inside of it and doesn't um, dissolve properly and do all those things. Maybe there's recipes out there now that you can make homemade that you can do. We used to do it with the uh, the um, the Fells nap the Fells naphtha bar, where we would shred that. I mean, I used to make it every month. It was like our what we did. We made laundry detergent. I would make it. I even bought little buckets, like little almost like an ice cream pail bucket, and then I made my own laundry detergent and it gelled up. It was great. We scoop it out, and then we had big five gallon buckets. We'd scoop it out and use it. Great. Those are all good things to do if you want to save. Um, there's 
there's also powdery mixes you can do. I have found that I can't use powder in my high efficiency because again, it gets stuck in there. I started using it in the mountains a little bit. I was able to find like a big bag of, I think it's called, is it Zote? I think it's Zote. It's a huge bag of crystal laundry soap. And so using the cold water, it didn't dissolve as good. So okay, I had to move up a little bit because the wind is blowing. Hopefully it's not too, I don't know until I get editing if there's a lot of wind. So I may have to redo this whole video. I hope not. So it's just nice outside. I want to film somewhere different than inside. So anyways, so laundry soap. So I am, nowadays I love the, the little YouTube shorts. They say, I don't know, what is it? Two tablespoons of laundry detergent like is enough that you need for your whole wash. Whatever works, whatever, whatever you want to believe. I found that you can just use the minimum it works. Our washer now, I pour in, we have eight of us doing laundry in our house and um, I pour into the self-service thing that it does all on its own and maybe once a week I fill it up. I found a whole big giant jug thing lasts about five to six weeks in our house. The one from Sam's Club, I don't know how many ounces it is. So we really don't go through that much stuff where before when everybody was measuring out their own, it disappears really quick. I don't know whatever works and so we did that we always stayed away from fabric softener because it just coats the inside of your washer and your dryer and so we just stayed away from those kind of things the scent crystals my, a lot of my um teenagers bought it at one time because they wanted their laundry to smell fresh and all that great stuff and then i said yeah give it some time you'll just see how it coats your clothes that's all it does it's just perfume to coat your clothes <laughs> So just clean your clothes, wash your clothes, wash them thoroughly. Don't overfill the washer. Make sure there's lots of room for it to move and it will be clean to use. But I mean, to everybody, each their own. We want to have that, you do. Whatever works for you. We have some because I bought it because Craig was working in a shop and his clothes were stinking so bad from the smell. But since he's moved out of that job, it doesn't smell anymore. We would also use bleach and I still use bleach here for whites and things like that. But um, I always found that like, especially if my kids were little, if I just hung their, like if they had a stained shirt or even now when I get something that's stained, if I just put out in the sun, it usually bleaches. Usually, I remember my aunt teaching me that. She would have um, some, her kids would spit up on her, spill something on her clothes, and she's like, I'm just gonna put it in the sun. I'm like, what? And you lay it in the sun and it does bleach out. I had an apron and it had a couple stains on it. I washed it, it didn't come out. I just laid it on my table over there and it took all the stains out. So stick in the sun. Sometimes sun is a natural uh, bleacher of things. And when I had lots of little ones, um, we wear a lot of bibs all the time. Bibs, most of the time, to protect their shirts. It's always a good thing. I have anything to hand wash, which I very rarely do, very rarely. And, and again, now the washers, you can put a delicate cycle on there. I would hand wash it just in my kitchen sink. I would fill it up with cold water, maybe a little warm so my hands weren't frozen. You know, put your soap in there. And I would do things that if they would, were to bleed, I would do those last. So I would do my lighter things first, hand wash those, squeeze them out really good, rinse them out, and then hang them up. And then I'd always tell my kids if there's like red or blue mixture, those things that bleed on everything, do those separately as well. And then hang them up in a shower bar to dry. Or I have, now they have hooks all day long. I bought the one in my on my door back there for like $10 on Amazon. <laughs> I'm looking at my book and it says, I always do full loads as not to waste anything. <laughs> but again, now that doesn't even pertain to anything. So we would always make sure everything was full. And then if I had a little bit extra room at their wash costs in there or socks or something just to fill that space. But I don't even think that pertains to anybody. So that's probably old news. Now, I know a lot of people, the reason why they get behind in laundry is because they don't pay attention to when it's done. So I would constantly be listening for that buzzer to go off. And as soon as it went off, I ran back whatever I was doing and switching those lo loads out. This would, now this is if you do Monday as your laundry day so that you continually keep doing laundry. Otherwise you'll start and then you'll forget about it. And it'll be the afternoon. You'll be like, oh my goodness, I forgot my laundry. So if today, if Monday is your laundry focus day, Remember, focus on listening for the washer and dryers. So that way you can keep flipping the laundry around all morning long. And you should be done with your laundry before the morning. And then what we would do later on in the day, we, everybody would get a basket and we would all put their laundry away. So the girls would take theirs and I'd help them put it away. We'd fold towels in the living room together. Same thing with the other, everybody else's laundry, just to make sure that everything gets done. I had to come inside, I'm freezing. <laughs> I have an allergy to cold. I know it's weird. It's called uticaria. Um, yeah, it's so funny. A couple of you have commented, you've known people that have that. Um, and I even saw some YouTube short and some lady said, here's a video for a, a person allergic to the cold, but who eats cold foods or whatever. So I had to laugh, but yeah, no, I start getting hivey. Like I start getting rashy all over, like hives, literally like I'm sitting here and I'm like starting to feel itchy and I'm like, oh my goodness. And I'm like, okay, it's a little chilly out here. So I had to come inside, so <laughs> it's good. So anyways, back two things. So then I was reading through my book and I said, now fast forward a few years later and we have a septic and I was in lots of kids and I was not able to do it. So what I did, we're still on Monday, Monday, by the way, um, is we would do lawn, Monday was laundry and clean floors day. That was what we ended up doing because we had to separate things a little bit. So what we did then we were only like did two loads of laundry a day because we had that full drum washer 
And so I would just collect it, you know, get our laundry. I would do towels on one day, but I would do, um, as the bins got full, then on different days I would do it and, and then just keep throwing them into their baskets that I had on that bar, like the shelf. And then um, by the end of the week, we put it all together. So that was, we had to change it. Again, it's different. It depends on what your season of life is. But I still tried to focus on doing towels and bedding that day so that the bulk of that, because that's always a lot. The towels were always a ton of towels and the bedding was always work to do. So we would get that done and then, um, put that away for our share on a Monday. So again, it depends on what your life is like and what it looks like. Now you can do laundry all day long because we don't have septic, so it doesn't even matter. So since Monday wasn't just designated as my, my laundry day, I had to put something else that was a bigger job in our house. And for us, that was the floors. We had floors to mop, we had wood floors, we had tile floors, we had carpet everywhere. So that was something else I did for sure on that Monday was I really, okay. And that's not just like a quick vacuum. This is like doing really good, moving things, doing really good. And when I was right by the couch, I would take the stick and just clean out the couch real quick and underneath it as well because it was right there and then we would make sure we washed all the floors as well so we had to pick a bigger job to throw onto our monday so again this is all going to be what is going to be for you i'm just sharing with you how i did it and then fast forward till now my mondays are my bulk days of cleaning i always get my house in order on a monday for most everything. I still keep that kind of scheduled down and laundry's mostly on a Monday for me as well. So you just gotta do what's good for you. And then Tuesdays in our house were our cleaning days. This was back in the day, <laughs> even though it's Monday. I do Mondays now, but Tuesdays were clean days. So right away I would get up and I would throw two loads of laundry in based on what I could do just because I wanted to keep that flow going with that. And then since we our floors were a lot, cause we had a basement, we had there was just a lot of extra stairs, all that stuff to clean. So the floors were already taken care of on a Monday. So then Tuesday would be more dedicated to like the bathrooms because that was always a huge thing, the cleaning. And we would do the dusting and the windows, that kind of thing. So Tuesday would be mostly that. I would really focus on getting a deep clean of the bathroom. And at least that one day a week, it was done thoroughly. And then the rest of the week, I would just do like a quick wipe of the bathroom. And then I knew like even dusting and windows, things like that. And I would have the kids help me. And I knew that, you know what, if I didn't get the dusting done, that like maybe it was Friday. I'm like, oh, look at the fingerprints. But I knew that on Tuesday, it would get tackled. So having a plan for when you're gonna do things always helps. And for myself now, I kind of keep that schedule a little bit, but Tuesday and like Thursdays are my days. I kind of think if I don't really have anything to do, I do it more, some of our deep cleaning that I like, remember how I broke up our schedule and I did like focused on kitchen week one, week two was the bathroom. So I might take one of those and do some of those jobs on those days if I have extra time. But again, my life is so different each day. I can't really set that up. So I know on the days that I don't really have anything, I kind of focus on that. I was even going through my book and I was reading and I'm like, I haven't told how to deep clean. So this is how back in the day, this is how I would recommend deep cleaning. I, remember, I read a lot of homemaking books, a lot of homemaking books and I'm being efficient. And I remember like the um, cheaper by the dozen book the mom and dad they were efficiency experts like consultants you know you get like a big company will get consulting firms to come and watch them do their thing and then tell them where they're failing and what they do so I I think of that like in the home a lot like what is the most efficient way to do things now mind you I'm no expert, zero expert, and I will do things wrong. When I go to clean, I'll clean the wrong areas first sometimes, so I'm not perfect on this, but I remember reading through and what was the most efficient, because I really had to keep my time back in the day with kids. So mine was, I sprinkled powder cleaner in the shower and let it sit. Usually it's still wet from the shower, so it works good. And then if it wasn't wet, I would turn the shower on to get the ground wet. And then I would flush the toilet, sprinkle some in the bowl. I start with spraying some of the all-purpose cleaner in the sinks, wipe out the sinks with my sponge, turn on the water, wring it out, and continue wiping my faucet. Make sure to get behind it and be around all the corners. Wipe off the counter, put away any tiny items that may not belong on it, open the drawer and clean out any hair that I see. Wipe out the plastic containers, see if any Q-tip container needs to be filled and make sure we have enough towels and washcloths. I wipe down the front quickly and then move on to the toilet. Okay, so I would back in the day use a sponge to clean everything because it was cheap. These were things that we did before Norwex, you know, all those things before. I rarely bought paper towels because it was mostly me clean this was mostly me doing everything and it just cost money so I had to think do I want to spend all that money on paper towels or save it for something else and I chose to save for something else so then I would say then I move on to the toilet so I would wipe the inside of the toilet yes with your hand I remember I remember, I remember my first vlogs cleaning the toilet with my hand and people were like that's disgusting and gross and so it's just funny how everybody has done everything differently it really is. And I don't clean my toilet by, with my hands now because life is different. And guess what? I can buy toilet brushes that cost more money and just aren't a waste. And that is quite a right. I buy lots of paper towels to clean things now. But back in the day to save money, you know what? Wash it by hand. You do a better job because you get every inch of it. And I know this because I know that when I, like now, 
I wipe and clean things. It, I know it doesn't clean as good as a sponge does, but you know, you do what life can do for you. So I have written down, make sure you clean around the rim and go on the inside, flush, put in some all-purpose cleaner in the water and then wipe the rim, the back where the lid latches. If you rinse off your sponge, keep doing it in the toilet water because it's clean now. <laughs> Continue wiping the lid and the toilet tank, and I move down and do all around the front and the sides of the bowl. Don't forget the back. You'll be able to smell if there's any area that you did not wipe. Everything should smell clean. I keep squeezing and rinsing out the sponge as I clean. I then wipe around the toilet by the floor. Make sure to get all the way in the back. If I have boys, I wipe the walls. I know, gross, but it will cut down on the bathroom odor. And if I'm, as I'm cleaning the floors, I move the trash can out in the hallway for the child who needs to pick up that and empty it today. I know it's wiping of the floors, getting to the corners. Well, if I know it's part of the lower walls are dirty, I will wipe them as I'm cleaning the floors. So I would clean clean all of that thoroughly. Now, mind you, if you have a smell, I've been in a lot of people's bathrooms, a lot of people's bathrooms, and there's been bathrooms that are really smelly. I always apologize when people come to our house and they go into the boys' bathroom. <laughs> I always say, I'm sorry, that's the boys' bathroom. They're responsible for keeping it clean because I know it's not as clean as the girls' bathroom maybe or the one, the main one that we usually have people use. And so just because everybody does things differently. And again, back in the day, I would have, myself would do it all. So I know they'd be clean, but nowadays we're, you know, managing out and, and handing out chores for people to do so they're going to be a little bit different and that's my expectations are much lower <laughs> but if you have a smelly bathroom there's a reason why it smells it's because you're missing the pee smell somewhere i know by walking into a bathroom i even tell my kids i walk in there i'm like if you can smell urine then something's not clean so you need to do a better job wiping otherwise you're missing something in there you want to get rid of that smell so making sure everything is cleaned very well and then what i would do is i'd move on to my shower i would take that sponge i'd wipe up the front and then i would move on to the shower i used a, a bath poof back in the day because the grittiness would scrub everything really nice that is a cheap way to do it we can just scrub and cleaned everything in the shower that's how we clean things and then i would always rub my hand i even tell my kids now rub your hand and see if you feel the soap scum on the side of the tub i'm like scrub it all real good the little scrubby thing worked good i said now then rub your hand to make sure you don't feel anything now we use magic erasers that that works again multiple people cleaning different ways I've adapted and I'm like okay what do you want to use for cleaning and so you just do things differently sometimes so whatever works for you in your home I'm talking about the cheap ways old school doing it yourself <laughs> I haven't carried all my supplies in a bucket into the bathroom because we never stored um, cleaning supplies in the bathroom I do that now but when the kids were little I didn't store any type of cleaners anywhere except in the kitchen above the stove that was where I had a uh, cupboard and so I kept everything up there everything the only thing and I kept laundry soap in the laundry room um, but all of the chemicals were up in the kitchen I used cleaner back in the day um, if you use bleach it's okay but we we did use cleaner we still use cleaner mr. clean now so I would carry everything in an ice cream bucket like my put bath poo everything my sponge everything was in there so I would carry that so then what I would do with my bucket I'd fill up with water and I was able to pour and rinse out the shower because we didn't have the handheld shower back in the day I also at that time would have checked all the shampoos and um, see if I need to fill anything I know for um, like I wrote down if for me, I would put water in mine, shake it out if I needed to use it. But if it was getting low, I would just replace it. Sometimes squeeze the other one into the new bottle just to make sure all of that was filled in there. And if I looked at the shower curtain, if the shower curtain was looking moldy, I would know, make a note that we would bleach that. I also said refill any toilet paper, make sure there's enough in there because there's nothing worse than running out of toilet paper. So now we have it on our list um, to do for someone to restock, but sometimes they don't and they do forget as well, but that happens. I put that I replace any hand towels that we've used so it has a brand new hand towel. Now, pretty much nowadays we do one every day in most of the bathrooms and I wrote that I did not necessarily clean the mirror that day because on a different day I wrote down to like window clean things and so that wasn't part of my normal you know deeper cleaning day and then I gathered up my bucket with all my supplies and I went into the next bathroom we always had a few bathrooms always had three bathrooms we did we I don't think we ever had just two with all the kids no we've always had three bathrooms three or more bathrooms so here we have one, two, we have four bathrooms in this household. So lots of bathrooms, but everybody does their own. Like the girls take care of theirs, the boys take care of theirs, the guest bathroom or the bathroom down here gets taken care of by some other, the other girls, and then we take care of our bathroom. So, but I just go and check them nowadays. I said I make sure that if I'm out of cleaner, I write it down to put on my grocery list. And then I also take my sponge, rinse it off, and put it in the microwave to kill the bacteria. Isn't that funny how you do things differently? <laughs> And I said, if I do this early enough, then my day will go smoothly. Because bathrooms took a lot of time when you're cleaning. I said, but if I didn't, then um, it would take up my whole day. So I said, this was my main focus for cleaning because bathrooms took a lot of time. So that Tuesday was my cleaning day, but that was the bulk of it because that took a long time to get done. If this is not a realistic thing for you to say to do it all the day, then don't because I still had to do school. I still had to make meals, still had to spend time with my kids. So you have to pick what your deep cleaning, your main thing would be for you that day. So Tuesday was my cleaning day. So even though I did 
floors on one day. I guess I should just call it bathroom day. That's what I should have called it, but it was mostly the clinks that took a lot of time of my day was cleaning the bathrooms. Remember, don't overschedule yourself. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Then do something different. Okay, then we moved on to Wednesday and Wednesday was our baking day. So right away in the home, I knew the reason why you set up days is because when you first wake up, you don't have to think about what you have to do. Nowadays in my life, I have to have a plan before I go to bed, usually. If I don't, when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, what am I even gonna do today? So even like today, I knew I didn't have to clean anything because we did it yesterday. I do laundry sitting over there. Um, I do have to make food, but I don't have to do a ton of food because we did all that baking yesterday. So for me, I still knew what I had to do today. So this is why having days set up to do specific things helps. If not for me right now, my life, but this did back in the day, and maybe it will in your own life. So for us on Wednesday, it was our baking day. That was the day we did all of our baking in our home. So right away in the morning, I'd know, focus today, baking. So I'd get right up, I'd get my apron on, ready to start my day. I, I, I even wrote down, I left, I said, what started me on the path of apron wearing was because I had to replace all my t-shirts because of the grease splatters or the stains on the belly area from the sink water. <laughs> When I received an apron for Christmas and started wearing it years ago, I never went back. Every time in the kitchen, I put this on. Saves on my clothing because it didn't get stained. And duh, I still do that now because I would just go in my kitchen work. I always have like right here where your tummy would kind of sit where the sink was. I'd always have a stain from water or grease stain. So I always, I have apron. Aprons, I'm now, aprons are cool to wear. Like back in the day, I don't remember any, I didn't even grow up wearing an apron. I think my mom had a few, but she rarely wore them except for like, Christmas cookie making or something. So, but I, yeah, I've been wearing aprons forever because I realized all my shirts got stained. So aprons are, I wear them all the time, all the time. You see them in my kitchen videos. If I don't, I'm always like, ooh, my shirt's gonna get stained. It's funny. <laughs> I laugh, I like read this. I'm like, if I'm up early and working in church, I can put on a sermon or music and listen with my earbuds when my phone is in my pocket because this is when they had wired earbuds. <laughs> Pockets also good for small objects that you find like marbles, hair ties, things like that. And I said, it's really life-changing. For $10, it'll keep you clean. Ask for some for Christmas next time. So that's too funny. <laughs> but now aprons, it's not a big deal to buy a $10 apron anymore. So it's just the mindset of different when you have thinking about what do you want to spend your money on. So, all right. So then after my apron was on, I look at my menu plan and I see what I want to make for that week. The menu plan, you're gonna plan this. We're gonna do this another day. So this was another area to do. So for us, when I did my menu plan, I wrote down two treats um, for each week. So now I plan for the month and I just kind of pick out a bunch of stuff. And so I usually try to pick out a few for each week. It's different because yesterday I made a bunch of stuff for family, but back in the day, I would choose to make two treats each week. And that's how I plan it. So we had eight picked out for the month. And what we picked out, this is what we did. We did puppy chow and rice krispie treats for one week. Another week was apple dapple cake and granola bars. And then we did pumpkin muffins and banana bread. And then we did energy bites and chocolate chip bars. So we always did that on our baking day. We'd pick out treats to make for the week. So we had those made. So I'd pick one of the, one of those that we picked out for the week. I knew what I had, we kept it the same, it worked. And then we also did um, something that would stock my pantry or my freezer with things. So I might do some dried beans. If I was low on my beans, I might make a big pot of black beans and put them in. We did a lot of dried beans back in the day. We got tons of those little containers, the deli containers that everybody has now. And we would do those. We do refried beans as well. If I had a lot of eggs, we would do a lot of breakfast burritos. If we had a lot of bread, we did French toast or something like that. Sometimes I'd cook a lot of chicken or a lot of roast, basically a freezer day, and we'd break it up into little containers or soup. I'd make a big thing of soup and then I'd freeze it in containers. So I kind of tried to focus on something just to add to my, my freezer collection just to have for the month. There, there wasn't really once a month freezers. There kind of was. It was more like once a week freezer things. <laughs> a conglomerate of all of it. And I said, if I didn't have a plan for the day, I just checked my freezers and I see what I had abundant. So if I had a lot of bananas, we made something with bananas. If I had a lot of apples, we made a lot of things with apples. It just depended, or zucchini. It just depended on what you had. And if I didn't have a lot of treats or a lot of extras, I would just pop popcorn. Cause we always had a big giant bag, a 25 pound bag of popcorn seeds in the freezer. So we always made popcorn and to make a special, you can do melted chocolate on top or you can make caramel corn to do something different. And then on our baking days back in the day, I'm looking at like, we would do, um, something that was easy and that was spaghetti. So I would make a big pot of spaghetti sauce in my crock pot so I could let it cook all day. And then I also be able to take some and freeze it. So then I'll, all I had to do was boil some pasta later that day when I was really tired and exhausted from baking. And then we always made bread that day. So the fresh, the first day of freshly made bread was good for that day. And now also when you're in your kitchen working, it tends to get very dirty right away, right? So typically that day I would do a little bit of extra cleaning in my kitchen that day because I was already in there 
getting things done. So I usually would fill my sink up with soapy water, hot soapy water, and I would continually wash things as I did them. And I tried to keep my countertops cleaned, and I still try to do that once in a while, not always. Sometimes I leave everything till the end, but for the most part, I try to clean as I go. My mama's advice. Back in the day, I wasn't filming, so it didn't take a lot of time to do these things, but I, what I would do is when I, in between batches of cookies or batches of muffins, I would do a little bit of my cleaning, the deep cleaning of the kitchen. And that was just to get ahead for the week. So sometimes that might've been um, like wiping the front of the cabinets off or looking in the drawers, making sure they're organized, wiping those kind of things out. I always looked at somewhere and if there was tons of butter knives that were overflowing into my forks, I would take a few out. I had an extra box in our um, basement and I would take things that I never really used. If I don't use it for a few months, like six months, I put it in the basement. And then if I didn't touch it for a year, it got donated and moved to somebody else. So continually going through and being efficient that way because we didn't have a lot of space so I had to kind of make sure that I went through things and you know, if I didn't have the room for it, okay, time to move it out. We only had the minimal back in the day. And same thing if I had tons of hot pads because I collected them, um, it seems like I'd throw out the older ones and then refresh them with some newer ones. And I also would go through our towels and washcloths and if I had extra, they would go in the rag pile for Greg because he always used rags in the garage working on some kind of project. So and then I would go through my soap, make sure to fill up my soap containers. Maybe if I had all purpose cleaner for the kitchen, I would fill that up as well. Using things up, I still do that where I fill up my soap and then if I have a little bit left, I just leave it in the sink and then use that container up so that I cannot get rid of it. I always check to make sure nothing has fallen down in the back of my, like under the sink. So nothing goes to waste because I, and I don't realize people don't do these things. And that's why I wrote this because I'd go to people's houses, they'd open their cupboards and they'd be jam packed full of stuff. And there'd be so much stuff everywhere. And I think you see a lot of videos and people keep them all clutter free and nice and organized, but I, I don't think that's the majority of people. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. Um, but I realize that people just, they'll usually buy new things and kind of stick it in there and just keep adding, adding, adding whatever, whatever people do. So that's why I always would check to make sure nothing fell down on the back and make sure you bring it up so that you know what you have so you don't waste anything. I also wipe down my major appliances, clean them out, and I would do a quick wipe of my refrigerator. Those things, I'd look and see if there's any leftovers in the refrigerator, if there's a little bit of salsa, I threw in the spaghetti sauce. Nobody knew any different. Go through containers, those kind of things. I do that pretty much on a Monday here, but this is what we did for our Wednesday, our baking day. And I always, if we had too many like apples or oranges or carrots or celery, I would always take them out cut them up, put them on the counter so that the kids ate those so nothing went to waste. I had a coffee pot, so I rinsed up my coffee pot and got it ready for the next day. That was that was my time saver before I had a Keurig. It, had, it took me a long time to get a Keurig. I loved my coffee pot, I really did. And I would get it ready the night before and have it set so when I walked out in that kitchen, that coffee was ready. That's the I think that's the best thing in life is to come down. I think the smell of coffee in a coffee pot brewing is just the best. So I loved coming out in the morning and coffee was already in the pot. I was like, oh, such a nice thing. It took me a long time to switch over to a Keurig because I just love that like walk in and mm, coffee pot's ready to go for the morning. So something about a pot of coffee versus the little, the little pods are okay too, but mm, I don't know, something different. So I always got that ready for the next day right then. <laughs> it's funny reading through what I did. I said, I, I wipe off my kitchen floor with a rag to clean up any dropped foods while baking. I make sure to get the kick plate that's often overlooked underneath there. I clean out my sink drains and dump the food pieces in the trash and give my sink a good scrub with some powdered cleaner. A good wipe with the towel, we dry dishes and we wipe up any wet spots. Everything looks clean. I throw all my used rags into the washer along with my apron. I make sure all the counters are cleaned up. We've already put some of the baked goods into the freezer for later in the week. The rest gets covered and placed up high to avoid snacking. My kitchen day is complete. Yes, it has been a long day. My back aches, but I feel accomplished after this day and tomorrow will be easier. So that was why I planned my Wednesday was that. And it was a long day in the kitchen. So then guess what? The next day, we're on to Thursday finally, was my office day. And this worked good. Now, now I'm still kind of doing this because yesterday was my baking cooking day. It was a long day in the kitchen. I was like exhausted. So today I'm doing a chatting video with you. <laughs> So making your next day a little bit easier. So on my office, I had my office paperwork day is what I called my Thursday. So for me, this is what I did back in the day. Now life is different. I got to do my stuff on a daily basis. But what I would do is I focus everything that I would have to do considered office work on Thursday. If I had to, you know, send a bill or I had to look something up, I wrote it down on a piece of paper and then Thursday would be my day to do that. And these were things like movie recommendations like i would get <laughs> everything's so different now like if i hear about a good movie i'll write it down and then i'd look make sure that on this thursday when i was ordering my library videos because we ordered library videos every single week and so then i knew that day i was going to go on and order stuff for the week for library so i would order videos so that we could watch those we would order a ton of videos so i'd order school ones and i'd also order entertainment ones this was back in the day before youtube <laughs> 
<laughs> and everything's online, but we would order a lot. And so I'd make sure I order all my kids' books, anything we need for school. That was part of my office day. So that was something we did, making sure that's done. I also got my errand list ready for this day. And what I would do is I'd write down anything I need to do and go do, whether it was go to the library, go to the grocery store, maybe I had to pick up a prescription or whatever I had to do, I wrote it down. And exactly what I needed from that store so I would not forget. We also had a bag that we put right by the door and that was where all our library books went so nothing was you know, forgotten. So if you were done with your book, you hurry up and put it in the library bag so nothing would get lost. It was very rare that we lost a book. Whenever you had them in their bedrooms or didn't have that bag, they definitely got lost and I was always searching through everything to try to find the missing library video or book. Now back in the day, I did all my bill paying on that day as well. So I, I wrote down that in the back of my planner, I had certain days that we did specific bills. Like week one, this is back in the day, it was groceries. Week two was our gas, electric, internet, and trash bill. Week three was insurance and cell phone bill. Week four was a house payment. <laughs> how different life is now. Now we get paid once a month. So now everything gets paid at the end of the month and that's how we do things. So it's just different. However, do I said it, it helps you know what each week, it depends on how you're living. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, which I think most Americans are, if you know which week goes to which thing that helps to be able to designate it that. Now I might not be able to go shopping on week one for my grocery money, but I know that that paycheck was going to go just for groceries. So if that paycheck was a little bit slow, smaller, I would know I have to cut down my grocery bill. That's a, beautiful, that's a beautiful thing, living paycheck to paycheck. Now remember, you can also change your days that things are due. It depends, again, I get all mine paid on for once a month, so it doesn't matter. But if it's easier, you can also contact your companies and ask them to change the dates for you. They will do that as well, usually. I also wrote down, if you need to mail any bills away, which you don't anymore, I have all my necessary items in one place. I keep envelopes in my filing cabinet and my, my purse. I keep checks and stamps. I learned because kids like to have stamps. They like sticky things. And so if they think it's a sticker, they're going to take it. So I would keep that in my purse. I know, again, I don't like to have stamps now, but I think that I'm uh, very rare that I ever have to mail anything away. And what I did is I would put my letters in my errand list with a clothespin and stick it in my purse. And the reason why is because when I grabbed out of my purse, you see that clothespin. I probably should do that now. I just saw that. I'm like, that'd be easier because things get lost in your purse very easily. Sometimes I remember to do that now because sometimes in my purse, things get lost easily. If I have what I need, um, clipped with a clothespin. It's just easy to grab that whole thing out. Something that worked. <laughs> I also wrote down, if I, there was something I wanted to look up on the internet, I would do this today. Maybe I'd research a better way to teach fractions to my child, or maybe I wanted recipes or homeschooling get togethers or all those things. Whatever it was, I always put everything, a list to do that. And I would make sure that I did it on that day. I also, that one day a week would go through any mail. Nowadays, when we bring mail into the house, the kids, anytime we would get mail, um, we would just put it in a big pile and then guess what? I would go through it that day. What we do, I always did though, I'd go through my mail and if I had junk mail, I threw it in the trash right away. Throw it in the trash right away. You can actually sign up online. I haven't done this in years. I need to do this here in Florida because we're getting so much junk mail. There was a website you used to be able to sign up so they didn't send you stuff because otherwise you get so much junk mail in the mail. It just saves on, cut down on things. Also the do not call registry, all those things you can do to help uh, save on getting excess clutter in your home. So I would always put things right in my, um, like a pile in my office. If it was check stubs, anything it was, I'd put it right there in a pile. And then I knew on that Thursday, it was office day, I would take care of it and be able to put it away. <laughs> we also got a lot of magazines. So I would look through magazines and if I saw something I like, I'd keep it, I'd always rip it out and put it in a pile um, to read later. I used to make like a binder full of all of my, I would get, cause this is before the internet, mind you, and I would keep recipes out of it. Like even the Taste of Home um, cookbook or magazine, if they still have that, I would take out, rip out the um, recipe I want to, take a picture of it now, but back in the day I used to rip it out and then I could be able to try it out. So again, that was, it was all paper dedicated day. That was what I did. I also wrote a letter that day. That was something, that's something that's good to do because it's such a lost art to do, but how nice it is, especially when you're at home or even, you know, maybe just not out around with a lot of people to receive a nice handwritten letter. I had a drawer and I had a lot of stationery. Stationery is one of those things, I, Amazon probably sells it now, but back in the day it was hard to find. I used to get it at the um, the Mennonite store. They would always have nice stationery. So having a nice pretty stationery with stickers and just nice envelopes, nice things. I always had mine in one area. So I would try to write a letter to somebody, to a friend or to whatever. And it was just something simple. When you're writing a letter, you always want to do something encouraging. Don't do any of the negative. Don't do the bad. Don't start going through all the terrible things in your life. Start out with something encouraging that you want to say to somebody. And sometimes it was always nice to tuck in like a special tea bag or, you know, just something that was, you know, some kind of sticker, just something that was a little bit nice to throw into that, that was flat, that they were to receive. Because how nice it is to get something in the mail. Like, do you love getting things in the mail besides a bill? 
yeah, we all do. So good thing to teach your, your younger children things to do because it's a lost art and like no one really does it anymore. And so now digital, everything's quick and online and how that goes. But that was what I focused on, office, that kind of thing. Also like sending like text messages out or things like that or reminders to people or just encouragement to somebody. Just if you have a specific day, know that you'll do it on that day. I also wrote down like if I have nothing to do that day, I might clean out my filing cabinet. I used to have a big filing cabinet where we kept, used to keep, I mean, this is before digital, like check stubs and we keep all the receipts and all the, you know, statements from your billing company and all that. And this was, and I have a huge file folder of all these things. I kind of would clean it out and just keep the things that we needed to keep in one area. It's good to do that too. Like nowadays everything is online, which, you know, is easy to access. But if you do something specific, like, you know, birth certificates, social security cards, you know, warranties, things like that, I keep that all in one file folder so that it's there. But nowadays, since we have businesses, um, we have to keep receipts. So I keep those all together in one area as well. If there's something else I might do is write in my kids journals that was something else I would do on my paperwork a day as well as like just fill in my kids special journals and I just got regular old um, like notebook rolled notebooks with the you know the wire on the side and I'd write down something they did and I'd sometimes I'd fill those in. that was just something else to do on my office day I also might have started looking up DIY gift ideas for holidays or Christmas time, things like that. So that was something else I might do on that day specifically. And so this, this prevented from having you doing this all week long because it's very easy to get sucked into the internet. It is, watch videos. <laughs> so if you have a specific time, you're a little bit more intentional because I know that Thursday was my day for my office. So if I didn't really have anything to do, okay, that week I'm gonna start looking up some new recipes. So then I knew that I had an hour to scour whatever and look up recipes and go through things. And so same thing with looking up gifts and homemade things, DIYs, same thing. You were able to do at that time and be more intentional versus just like scrolling and looking at anything. I talked a lot in my book about clutter and keeping down the clutter. So paper clutter, and that was those ways of opting out of those, you know, things that they mail to you. I also talked about digital clutter, how your phone can be so full and some people like clutter and that's okay. I keep my stuff clean. So I would always weed out, weed out my emails if I don't need them. If I need them, I made a specific folder like to save these and I move them in there. If I have pictures on my phone, like some people have thousands of pictures from years ago on their phone. That's great. I take mine and move them into a Dropbox and then thus it takes it to my computer and I'm able to save it on my computer on a memory stick so we have it forever. So cleaning out the clutter from areas, that's just another thing you can do on your office day. So since this day, that day was my office day, I took the jobs that since I mostly had my cleaning day on the Tuesday, I would take jobs like window cleaning and dusting and I'd kind of divide that up among the children to be able to do. So their jobs only took about 15 minutes. It doesn't take very long. And then I was able to focus on something else. And that was what I do nowadays. I don't do my office day on one specific day. I, I guess my Saturday morning would be my office days when I get a lot of my stuff done, but I try to do it through the week because I have a lot of stuff that I have to do. So then I know that those other days I usually, you know, do chores the kids that the kids do that don't take up too much time. And for myself, I don't have anything specific planned for that day except the office stuff. And I also would make a list. That always helped too. So for my Thursday, office day, I, when I first started out, I made a list of things I could do on that day. Was One was, you know, everything I've said, write a letter, pay the bills, order library books, um, look up recipes, look up DIYs, look up homeschool ideas, or look up teaching ways or whatever. I had a list planned out because if I sat down that, if Thursday came, I, not every Thursday I knew what I wanted to do. So then I would sit down and go, okay, I don't need to do these, this, this, but what could I do? And I'd be able to look at my list and go, oh, maybe I'll look up some new recipes for the month. So having that, it just cut down on the what if, what do I do for the day kind of thing. So having this plan is what's just gonna help you to not waste time wondering what do I do for the day today? So that's a good thing. All right, now we're moving on to Friday. So Friday was our errand day. So back in the day, <laughs> when we just had one day for laundry and one day for cleaning and mom had to do most all of it, then that's all I designated was one day for errands and we did all of our errand day. I didn't do any other chores. I didn't do anything else that day because it was a lot and we had 10 kids. A lot to just get out the door with all the kids. When you're a mom and you have to do most all of it, it's good to keep things simple. But then as I get older, obviously the kids grow up and they're able to help a little bit more and you can kind of separate and spread things out a little bit better. So when my kids were a little bit older and they could help more, what we would do in our errand day is Friday, um, 
we always did school like four days a week. We usually tried to do school four days a week and then have one day not to have to do that. So usually in the morning, we would get up and I'd say, okay, this is our designated day to clean your room in your area. So they would all disperse and have to deep clean and do their rooms. And that was, um, and me too. Like I would get up and I have to make sure my room is all straightened before I got out the door. This was them cleaning their room, making their bed, cleaning under their beds, all those things. During the week, I didn't worry about it too much, but on Friday, everything was done very well. This was when we did, um, when I was able to ration things out and do a little bit of laundry each day. So on Friday, I'd say, here's your bin, put your laundry away. So they put that away. They'd vacuum every little inch of their floor, take out the trash, those kind of things. And so we made sure that before we left, the rooms were spotless. That was the goal to get out the door because everybody wanted to get out the door. So the rule to getting out the door is your room has to be clean, all of this done so we can all leave. I wrote down that, um, if that works well for me now, but when there was many little ones, I could not even fathom of doing extra chores that day because getting out the door on time was what was important. So you gotta do what you gotta do. I remember just waking up thinking, okay, I just gotta get to the store. So I just gotta feed kids and then get them because I had to nurse a baby and then make sure they were set before the drive and then make sure they're set. So there was a lot more that went with it. So don't stress yourself out. You do what you can do. If you, if you can do it stuff before you get out the door, awesome. But if you cannot, you just focus on getting out the door because that's a big job in itself. <laughs> and then I wrote a little note that said, and I've learned over the years that it's best to stay home with the kids. If you have kids, it is easier to stay at home. And I've learned that over the years. It is so much easier to be at home most of the time. And I know this as I'm older, like even now, when I have weeks that I'm home, most of the time I don't have to do running, don't have to pick somebody up from work or do this or do that. My weeks are so much more peaceful because it's easier to get things done. When I got to run out that door and do things, it is so much more chaotic and so much more like time crunched and you got to get this done. You have to get this done within the certain time. So same thing with little kids. You know, they're always, always, always... <laughs> It was a meltdown by some child because they were too hot, too cold, hungry, tired, whatever, didn't feel good, or who knows what the reasoning was. And so it was always, there was always something crazy that happened that made it just a little bit more stressful. So staying home most of the time was always good because then we knew that Friday was our day to get out. So if we were looking forward to getting out Friday, okay, then the rest of the week's gonna be good. Friday's gonna be a little chaotic, but we will get out the door and we will have a great time. And the reason why I did this is because I wrote down and said, um, it was crazy. It was crazy. And I said, I couldn't even think about playing out my menus for the month. It was hard enough just for the week. I had to go to the store every single day, you know, every once a week we had to go. We didn't have groceries and it was just, and I had to get a lot of food because there's a lot of people. And I said, some days were great. Others were always resulting in a meltdown by some child and gone are those days. And I said, I am thankful to be able to do what I do now, but I did get through it. So what would I do different? <laughs> I said I would have read my own book, Smiley Face, and I said I would have lessened my expectations for how I did things, like how clean my house was or how my schedules were, things like that. And I said, and I would have kept my meals simple, and I said, and I would have stayed home more. Live and learn, that's what you do. I say, that's why I say all that, because I learned what works good. It works good to have a schedule, and ha not a set schedule, but knowing what's to happen for the day, know what my expectations are for the day. And if I don't do it and it messes up, that's okay too. But I knew what was expected for the day. My kids knew what was expected for the day. We knew we were going to do these things on this day. We knew that Wednesday was baking day. We're going to bake something this day. And so it was just expected and done. And it just made the week, it made the week go by better. And it made our days flow a little bit easier. We still had, you know, things happen, but at least they went through. We kind of knew what was going to happen. And, and, and the best thing is that our homes were peaceful had meltdowns, had things go wrong, but the peacefulness was there because we knew we were going to do and have, you know, things happen that day. So don't get discouraged if your life is crazy. It get it. It happens. It does. And that's why I'm here to share with you things that I've done wrong. So hopefully that can help you encourage you for your days. So this all takes time. This all takes time to do. It takes time to plan the cleaning. It takes time to plan everything. But once you take that time and do it, it will so help tremendously from that point on, I promise you, I promise you it does. Don't be rigid, but be very flexible because the moment you're rigid and you feel like you have to stick to it, because I did that, I tried to like, all right, from 9 to 9.30, we're gonna do this, 9.30 to 10, we're doing this, did it, and then no, things happened and you couldn't stick to it. So be flexible with how you do things. Okay, so now we're gonna head out the door. Are you ready to head out the door with all the kids? Let me share with you what it was like. Okay, so this day we would get our chores all done, right? And then we would pack up sandwiches because eating out at McDonald's was very expensive <laughs> and we had to save money. So we would pack sandwiches, we would have treats. I made, um, we would sometimes, usually just do peanut butter and jelly because that was cheap and easy. And then um, we would also take usually apple slices and we would take pretzels. And the reason apple slices is because they were water hydration. So they wouldn't have to drink a lot of water to use the bathroom because going to the bathroom with all the kids, that's another, that's another stress in itself. And then um, pretzels, 
dryer that's a little bit easier to eat versus like other things that get lost on the car. And then someone would fill up everybody's water bottles because we would take water bottles with us as well. We'd have that in the cooler by the door. Everything was set by the door. So nothing would get like first, this is, now this is when you had a lot of kids, nothing would get lost. This day I would do chili. Chili was our Friday staple because I threw everything in the crock pot. My hamburger was already um, cooked in my freezer. So I would just take it, I would literally throw it all in the crock pot and try to take it out to thaw, but usually I forgot. So everything would go in there and then I wouldn't have to worry about it. And then dinner was done when I got home. I always, I put the children dressed in something that's comfortable for them. I wasn't worried about having them look whatever way. If they like wearing sweatpants, they wore sweatpants because you want it comfortable. You want it something that they like to wear. We picked up clothes the night before so that it wasn't stress it wasn't crazy everybody knew what they're gonna wear to get out there it sounds silly but when you have a lot of kids you gotta do things like this uh, we put our coolers by the door with ice packs to get out there we grabbed our reusable grocery bags and then we also took baskets I would take some of our laundry baskets because I didn't like smushed bread and smushed chips so that way it would keep those nice and you know good in the bed and the basket without getting squished I should do that now now when they were little we would sit around the table and have breakfast and I would go over the rules that were expected for the day when we headed out and this was just to help remind them because they were little mind you they were little and it's a lot of kids a lot of kids so to remind them no screaming or being loud in the car because that was an issue that we had and when getting out we had a big giant van so be careful when you open the doors not to slam into somebody's doors that's something you actually teach kids to do don't brush up against the side of the van because in florida here it'd be different but in michigan we had salt and it was the cars were always dirty so if they would rub against you know you get out of the car and they have to stay there and wait because you had a lot of kids to get out um i would make sure that they don't lean up against the back of the van because your coat would get all that yucky salty dirty car stuff on the back of your outfit only touch things you're gonna buy wow yes those are rules for little kids otherwise they would touch everything in the store they knew where we were gonna go and i was saying it once in the car everybody heard it i wasn't gonna repeat myself multiple times through the day so they knew what we were gonna do we were driving, I would share with them where we're going and what we're doing for the day. And then that was it. They weren't allowed to ask me anymore because otherwise they would ask you over and over and over and over and over again. Yes, they did. And I always tell them to smile, pay attention to people around you because someone might just need a smile for the day. So smile, make sure you're focusing and looking around, make sure you're not running to somebody, staying out of people's way so they can go. Now, mind you, we faltered on this, we're never perfect, but just reminders for, you know, to be respectful and good when we go places. And I always tell them to be aware of elderly people, especially in um, shopping carts or not even elderly, it could just be a disabled person that in a shopping cart and make sure that if watch and see if they are needing something off a shelf and then always offer assistance to those people. Just things to be aware of. Those are all good things to teach. I mean, we as adults should do this too. Just life, you know what I mean? Being kind. Now, when I had little kids, sometimes I would um, reward them with a treat and this, not always, not always. It was just depends on life. So sometimes we would get a box of ice cream sandwiches that they could have on the way home or we would get a five dollar pizza and this one pizza was five dollars to enjoy it just depend on what we could do if we could even afford it at that time so not always not always but it was something fun to have and like okay you did good so then you got something fun but it wasn't like something that cost too much money and then as soon as we got home we made sure like right away sometimes people would come home and just throw their stuff in the house and take care of another day i do that now but to be more efficient, if you have to in your home, you know, bring your stuff in right away. Put away the stuff, like the water bottles, right away in the sink. Somebody start rinsing those out with hot water so we can just put those up on the rack to get them dry. Otherwise, they sit in the sink for a few days. That happens. You know, your laundry, your, um, your bags for groceries, put them all away. Put the ice packs in the freezer. You know, get your library stuff out. If you look in your purse for any receipts, throw away stuff you don't need. Put your cards back in your case. Make sure your purse is all clean and ready for the next time things you can do do i do it every time absolutely not but if you want to be more efficient with things those are things you can do so by fridays i was usually exhausted because going out with everybody was a lot so the errand day takes a lot you know something else i didn't share but i would always have a list of think places i was going to go when you're going places plan out the places you have to go and put that on your list to do so that you get those accomplished. Like if we, you know, in the mountains, we would have our library because that was right by us. We'd go to first, then we'd go to the post office because that was next. Then we would go into town. We would go to the car wash because it was on the right hand side. It was easier to get off to the right than it was to cut across traffic. After that, we would drive in and we would go to Sam's Club because it was the furthest and we would get our gas and then we'd get our groceries. Then we'd come up to Walmart and get the things that we had to get at Walmart. And then we'd be able to drive home. If I had to stop anywhere else because it was on the right hand side, we would do those things. I don't really have a plan here in Florida because um, everything's everywhere and it's different. There's traffic everywhere anyways. But I know like if I have to go somewhere, I kind of plan so I don't have to go like one place and then go another place and then another place. I'm learning my ways here so I don't know. So kind of have a plan of where you need to go 
before you go because that cuts down on your driving, traveling, all those good things. So that is our Friday. Then when you're done with Friday, you're exhausted because you did all this running. <sighs> you did it. Great job. Now we're moving on to Saturday. All right, now we're on to Saturday. Saturday was for our extra day. We did any yard work or any extra chores that did not get completed during the week. And then that was the day that Greg was home more, so we did extra jobs that might, we might require his help. So things like cleaning the chicken coop out because we had chickens. We had chickens and ducks and geese, and that was always a big job. So that would be Saturday morning, washing the car because we would clean the car. And checking the yard for trash or toys, things like that, cleaning the garage, cleaning up the porches. That was all things that we did on a Saturday. Now, if I didn't have anything specific on the list or you know, Greg was working or it was raining or we couldn't do anything, I might do a bigger job that Saturday, like decluttering of toys or going through seasonal clothing, um, you know, things like that, cleaning out, decluttering an area of a home something that I normally wouldn't do during the week because it was too busy and just take it on on the weekend on Saturday morning. Sometimes it's organizing school for the month because I used to organize our school for the month. Just something to do that, something that I could do that was uninterrupted time. And then sometimes Greg worked a lot during the week and so he was gone a lot of hours and so the weekend was our time to do something. And sometimes, you know, he'd get up and he'd feel tired and he'd want to rest for the day and that's fine. But sometimes he was like, let's go here, let's go here. So I knew how to be prepared for anything. So I knew if we were gonna do the beach, like all the items I would need for a successful beach day. I knew like if we were gonna be hiking, all the things we needed for a successful hiking day. It didn't take me hours to get out the door. It took me like minutes. Like I knew what I have to grab, even now. I love seeing my older kids, like before we head out the door now, they're like, all right, do you have everybody have a towel? Everybody got a water? Everybody got your shoes? Do you have your lunch? Do you have a sandwich? Do you have enough snacks? Do you have some fruit and some veggies? They go through all that just like, because they have lived it so long to be prepared to get out the door for an extended period of time. And we pretty much keep the same thing all the time. It just makes it easier. Now, sometimes we have everybody make their own lunches. Um, sometimes we make a big giant thing of chicken salad and salting crackers and some oranges because it's usually at the end of the month and we have those things more than the fresh lunch meat sandwiches and things. So, But knowing what you've got to have to get out the door, makes it so much easier. It really, really does. And if you can have like a bag or something in your car with stuff in it already, that helps. So just kind of knowing what you have to have to is, it's just a huge, and I, and I know it's not everybody does because I see people that it just, um, it's harder to like, they get out there and they're like, oh, I forgot that. And I forget things too. But it's just, if you have, like, you know what you gotta do to be successful for the day, have it and be good. Make sure you have enough food. Snacks are always important, especially with little kids, make sure you have enough water. Their water bottles deplete. So we always take an extra jug of water with us, no matter what, because car could break down. You could get somewhere where there's no water. Um, snacks, same thing. Everybody could have their snacks, but guess what? We could get stranded where we have to be somewhere for an extended period of time. So I always try to take extra with us, like an extra bag of pretzels or peanut butter crackers, things that don't require refrigeration of that, but there's always an extra in there. And on like extra towels, I take extra just because I know someone's gonna forget them or they're gonna get wet or something's gonna happen. So having that mindset of what you have to take to be prepared to be out for the day is a huge thing, especially with a lot of little kids, just kind of knowing what to have just makes everything flow so much more smoother. It just it helps you get out the door better because um, it really does. If it takes you hours to get out the door and prepare, that's not a good thing. That's not a fun, enjoyable thing. You wanna be able to get out the door quickly and have everything so you don't you know forget things and it's okay to forget a few things but you know what i mean for the majority it's all covered and then our sunday was reserved for a resting day but when we had a lot of kids it was still work to get out the door <laughs> work yes it's always work and so i would make sure everybody's clothes were out the night before so there was no running around sunday morning trying to find which clothes they're going to wear um i faltered and don't do that now and i'm like oh you didn't have clean clothes so it happens but um they weren't allowed to do devices or anything until we were all set to go and you were completely ready to get out the door and then you can because if you had to wait for a while for somebody but having that having breakfast for everybody sometimes I do crock pot meals um, in the morning or overnight like for breakfast crock pot or just simple sandwiches breakfast burritos and then I would usually try to throw in something for dinner so when we got from church it was already done sometimes we had church where we drove a little bit so we'd always pack sandwiches to take so on the way home we could eat those again whatever works for your life your home like I know for us now here I do most of my cooking on Friday, so it's great having a refrigerator full of food to be able to eat and have just come home and heat it up. Sometimes it's great to have a crock pot full so that when we come home, we just it's already cooked and ready to go. So planning out your week, getting things set. Again, it doesn't have to be legalistic. You don't have to be rigid with it, but having a general idea, just managing your days of what you do. If it works for you, for myself, 
Like I said, right now in my life, I can't do that specifically, but I do have a somewhat schedule. So for right now, Monday is most of my cleaning day. We get most of our cleaning done on a Monday. And I know that Friday is mostly my gather your fragment, make food for the weekend kind of day. Just how we do things. I try to get a baking day in there Wednesday usually, or maybe third, it just depends on the day. I did it Monday this week. Will I do more this week? I don't know, maybe. And then, um, you, like I said, in one day I try to do cleaning. Not always, some days it's different. It just depends because my life is a little bit different right now. But if you're home or if you need a schedule, hopefully this works for you. So, all right, that's what I wanted to share with you today, managing your week out. If you need a little bit of chaos in your days and you feel like you're overwhelmed with what to do, don't know what to do, try this out for your week and see if it makes things better. So, all right, so I'm closing today's video because I have a, I have some running to do today. I have running to do today and a lot of um, in and out of the house and school and life and all that. that it's just gonna take some time. So I wanted to share that with you so I can have give you some encouragement, hopefully help you with your week, and then um, we'll move on to tomorrow. So come back tomorrow. All right, have a fantastic rest of your day. See ya, bye.